Hi everyone, I'm back from a long hiatus and guess where I went? I spent three amazing weeks um, from uh, the late first week of December to uh, coming back um, after, just after New Year's um, from Spain in Dublin. So I wanted to tell you about the amazing places and things that I got from my um, experience in Spain. So I, it's my first time in Spain. I've never been, and we actually didn't intend to go to Spain. We wanted to spend originally a one week in London, one week in Edinburgh, Scotland, and one week in Dublin. That was our original plans. We had actually bought the tickets like, you know, uh, many 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 months ago uh, before that but as time moved along it turns out that uh, due to the COVID restrictions and all the testing and whatnot it turned out that um, we were scared that we were going to land in quarantine or there wouldn't be anything to do if we went to London uh, or Scotland because they were very strict so we ended up changing at the last minute our tickets to Spain instead so <laughs> I don't recommend changing your, you know, your tickets at the last minute to, uh, to have another exchange because uh, we flew from San Francisco to um, Chicago. Uh, that was the first leg of the trip. Then from Chicago, we went to Dublin. And then from Dublin, we went to Madrid. <laughs> Because we had that one extra unex sort of like third, st uh, like second exchange, our luggage, uh, because we didn't originally buy the same, we didn't have the same itinerary from the beginning and we just added in the last leg as, you know, like as a separate transaction. The people in the airline, act which is Aer Lingus, actually lost our luggage <laughs> so even though Dublin is only two hours flight from Madrid okay two hours that's like driving from San Francisco to Sacramento okay that short of a flight we still they still managed to lose and did not get our luggage to us until like almost a whole week for one of us and then uh, like four three or four days for me so as you can imagine, we had to wear the same outfits basically for the same, for the same first several days of our stay. Luckily, what we did was um, we went to the most uh, relaxed city on our trip to Spain, and that city is Toledo. So um, the reason why we wanted to go to Toledo was um, because we were still kind of semi working um, because we're taking such a long vacation. We brought along our mm, laptops so we can answer emails and take care of like urgent business whilst we were on vacation. We're going to do that for the first week and then basically taper off during the holidays and not not handle anymore. So <laughs> so basically we were in Toledo um, due to the pandemic the hotel was well, it's a five star hotel and this hotel is um, part of the Marriott collection it is called the um, Eugenia Eugenia de Montijo hotel it's right smack dab in the heart of Toledo um, an amazing location amazing hotel uh, very nice and quiet it's like a boutique hotel uh, it had it was very spacious um, bright uh, quiet um, the had a bathtub and also a shower but then um, it also had a wonderful device that I wish that American hotels would have and that is a towel um, a heated towel rack so after you uh, take your shower and you have the wet towel, you put it on, the, you stretch it out on the heated towel rack and you turn it on and basically it heats up your towel to be nice and toasty. Um, it feels amazing on your skin. I wish I had one of these devices in my house. Um, and I would if I wasn't, 
if I was sure that I wouldn't like set it on fire or something like that, you know, with my ditziness. But anyways, the first week in Toledo was really amazing. Uh, if you guys have never been there, it's an amazing city. It's basically an old style medieval city from the Middle Ages. So it's not just a part of it that's medieval looking. The whole old city is basically like a walled city, kind of like, and it's surrounded by a river and the river surrounds it like a moat, kind of like, and there's a crenellated wall like a stone wall, like kind of around most of it. So it as, it also has, it, it looks amazing. It's a hilly um, and it's full of cobblestones and the some of the streets are so narrow that if you're claustrophobic, <laughs> you can barely see the sky. And the reason why they built it that way is because, you know, this was the middle ages. They didn't have a lot of space, you know, it was just, um, they saving on resources and work another thing is spain gets really hot so when you build the uh, walls of the buildings closer together and have a smaller space in between the uh, walls of the buildings um, block out most of the sunlight and it's very nice and cool um, in the summer and it's also because it's stone so it's nice and cool However, in the winter, it's not that warm. Um, it's quite cold. So Toledo is a little, an hour and a half or maybe an hour uh, from Madrid, the capital. And basically uh, we arrived and we decided not to take the train with our luggage and everything because you had to get from the airport to some specific train station and do a transfer and whatnot. And we decided to just not go through with that because it's our first time in the country we're carrying luggage I have a quite a large a roller luggage that I didn't want to be lugging around you know the streets of a foreign city and my first time there so we decided to hire uh, we pre-hired a person on Agoda which is like kind of like Expedia in America and this person just uh, carried a sign and saw us at the train station and picked us up and drove us straight from the Madrid airport to um, to uh, to Toledo, to our hotel in Toledo. And he was great. Um, he spoke pretty good English. And my surprise when I first got there was when we were driving on the freeway is how dry <laughs> and dusty and desert, kind of like high desert like that um, the outskirts of Madrid look like. So basically in the distance, all we saw were a bunch of like row after row out of, of red, like terracotta looking like large apartment complexes. It was not very charming. And then along the way, the landscape was very parched and sandy, the soil, and was very dry and kind of like red and, you know, dusty looking. Um, so as we were driving, the closer we got, we saw in the distance this gorgeous, like, it looked like Disneyland, but real, you know what I mean? It, a walled city in the distance, and we're like, oh my god, is that it? Because, trust me, the landscape was entirely flat and uninteresting, and there was a quite a lot of graffiti along the freeway signs and whatnot. So, you know, we weren't, you know, we were kind of a little bit dismayed, you know? Um, but not to worry the first time we saw Toledo we were driven in a car in the golden late afternoon sunlight and this place looked I just it, it words can't describe it it was so beautiful it was almost like an intact medieval village was just like right in front of you and there was like intact bridges these um you know with uh castle looking gates you know what I mean and also uh, a ri beautiful river running through it. There's also uh, nature walks around the whole city, you know what I mean, where the river goes along. So it, it was like just stunning. And we were like shocked. Um, because of the COVID, there weren't a lot of international tourists. Our hotel was very, very not dead. I mean, there were infrequent visitors, you know, from other European countries and from Spain. 
Uh, there was no, hardly any Americans. We almost heard no Americans or, or British people there. It was mostly Spaniards. Um, and also a few Germans <laughs> came. So this hotel was really nice and accommodating. Um, in the evening, we would go to the deserted, like um, they have a lounge downstairs that was also a bar restaurant. It's it's very beautiful with super high ceilings. This used to be the house of a really rich aristocratic person who um, donated it to, who I think it got bought out and it got switched to a hotel. So it was very nice. And um, so basically, oh, and the hotel has a du two toilets. One it was for a regular toilet, and the other toilet was something that had a like sort of a, a spout faucet that you turned it on, it would um, help you wash your uh, privates um, for hy hygiene, I guess. So yeah, um, so basically this, this city um here's here's a something that i got from toledo uh, spain is known for its um uh, leather works and i got this really cool um, keychain it's a leather keychain that i'm using already and this is uh, basically they call themselves uh tre tre culturas um cuidad de las tres culturas so cuidad means city of three cultures and you as you can see um so they are um, Christian, Jewish, and Muslim. So basically, um, Toledo is actually a, a Christian stronghold. So that's why, um, but there's like remnants of a mosque, remnants of, um, of a, a synagogue that were very beautiful. And you can see that um, these were the, the religions and cultures that had an impact on Spain and it was a very interesting visit so let me show you some of the things that I got there um, this is one of the things that they're known for so if you go to there it's kind of touristy there's a lot of little shops that sell this so this is beautifully made um, gold um, what do you call it gold plated gold overlay so basically this is called damaskinos um a damascene so damascus is actually in syria i believe or lebanon and um this was a an art form where uh people will take gold leaf and they would um um put it engrave it etch it into um steel or iron and then they would put it into the oven and bake it and then when that happens the iron part turns black and then the the gold uh, overlay is uh, really shiny and, and beautiful on here so the really yellow gold is i think 18 karat and the lighter gold is uh, 14 karat uh, you have to be very careful um, about this because w it does flake off uh, if you're not careful with it so this is like a plate um, that um, comes with uh, like feet on the bottom, but you don't use it. It's not, it's only purely decorative. You're not supposed to use it to eat or anything. It's not safe to eat. So basically it comes with its own little stand and it goes like this. Um, be careful maneuvering it and moving it around be um, because basically if you don't, the gold will flake off. But this is a really beautiful design and this is like um, from the Muslim designs. So Muslims, they don't, uh, their belief is that they don't try to reproduce the human form. Um, so they, a lot of their decorations and objects will be these beautiful geometric forms and uh, decorations and flowers. So that's uh, one, of the, one of the things. Uh, this one was quite ex was quite expensive um, because that one was done by hand. So there's different types of dam damaskinas. This one is quite a bit cheaper, and this one is um, done by machine. So the machine ones will be cheaper, 
And um, so this is a typical a Christian civilian uh, uh, Toledo design with the birds um, and the flowers. Um, so this is the distinction between the um, Muslim and the Christian. There's even ones with the Star of David's um, for the Jewish um, Jewish designs. And um, so Toledo also has a Jewish quarter and the Jewish quarter will have, um, it's a really be a lovely little neighborhood. Um, they have like tiles telling you this Jewish quarter and they have the menorah and the Star of David in little tiles in the in the ground so the grounds are made of little cobblestones so you'll see these little ones on the ground to let you know that you're in the Jewish quarter um, that if you like that design and you think you know what why don't they put that into a necklace or jewelry yes they have it in a necklace and jewelry so here are the the workmanship varies so this one is a very a detailed one you can see that it's not just a simple bird you can see the the wing uh, the feathers are delineated you can see a detailed face the flowers are very detailed it's not just in yellow gold but also there's a lighter gold right here so this one is one of my favorite necklaces and this one comes from oops okay well anyways so this one looks really amazing because I wear a lot of black. So the yellow gold, it contrasts really well with the black. See? Yeah, and then on the back, it's like a wafer shape like that. So these, there's cheaper ones like, um, let me show you. So these cheaper ones will be in, you know, with a cord in these little plastic bags and stuff like that. So then they, these would say, you know, uh, they're made by uh, an artisan. And, but the thing is, these are kind of like mass made and these are perfectly fine, but as you can see, um, there's not that much detail. It's not really gold inlaid, whereas this one surely is. Okay, this one surely is. And then also uh, on the clasp, there's a little heart in the middle. Um, this one is actually from um, this place, Artiziano uh, Luis Conde Serrano, Taller de Damascano, Damascinados Toledo. So that's the workshop that came from. So there's a big price difference. Um, those cheaper machine made ones are going to be like, you know, 30, 20, 40, 50, 60 like um, euros. And these ones might be like a um, little bit more, almost like a hundred euros, depending on the gold and the design. So this one's a much bigger pendant. I really love this one. Um, I'm tr you need to wear these uh, with care and not rub it against some stuff because the, the gold will flake off because of the way they, they do it. So I also have, um, you know, they also sell other stuff with this designs on it. And I bought some uh, use, I found some of the more useful things for me is uh, I bought some letter openers. Sorry, I forgot to bring it out, but that suffice it just because I put it into my, um, my uh, pencil box, <laughs> my pencil holder uh, on my desk because I'm constantly opening up correspondence. And I find that uh, a, a beautiful letter opener that has a nice weight but is not too sharp but is a nice size is perfect for me, my lifestyle so I have two of those one is highly ornate um, with like the flower patterns very gold and the other one has more black and it's a lot cheaper so another thing Toledo is known for is knives and also swords so Toledo is one of the few places in Spain left where they still make knives on their own and swords on their own. So Toledo steel is like, was famous uh, back in the day. And uh, so I've decided to buy some knives. So uh, here's, I bought a set of knives like this. Um, I don't know where my roommate put them, but they're really nice. They're, they look like butter knives, but they have um, 
a short little angle on top so it's not like a steak knife that's really uh, long it's kind of like truncated like that uh, tilted to the side and I also bought this um, short knife with a beautiful uh, wood handle that's really sharp for my brother um, the guy at the knife shop, shop told me that this was a good size to have it's not too big it's not too small um, so basically it comes its own leather sheath like that they have famous knives in Spain I forgot the name of it um, I got a really good deal off of that and also in in Toledo um, they have a lot of uh, kitchen shops kitchenware shops so I I bought a, a scissors from Victoria Knot, and I also bought this another pair of scissors uh, kitchen scissors from this brand called uh, Tres Calaveles so that means three three blades I guess so these are kitchen shears and these are really heavy and super super they look really durable and well made I haven't used this yet but I've used this and I for traveling I highly recommend you either bring a pair of scissors with you in your packed luggage check-in luggage not in your carry-on because they won't let you carry that on uh, I highly if you're gonna buy anything get some scissors with you they're so useful we use them so many times for so many things you know taking off the labels cutting off the um, luggage tags and you know so they don't get confused and everything like that and also you know opening new th opening objects you know what I mean another thing is if you buy a, a bunch of stuff and you have to pack them you need these scissors and also some clear pack packing tape which we bought in a five and dime store you went up uh, and that helped us so we basically get um, paper uh, you can get like the newspapers or you know sometimes when you buy a bunch of stuff at these stores they will pack them uh, loosely in in paper and stuff like that I do have to say that make sure from experience if there if if this comes with your plate make sure they pack this separate in a separate paper package from the plate because a lot of them were um, tempted to put them together in one package but the thing is this is loose and this will rub against the gold and they will take off some of the gold so I learned that from experience okay so make sure that they pack this in a separate little wrap than this don't let them pack this together they're trying to put them together so you will know they belong together and you don't throw this away thinking it's like a piece of trash because it's so small but yes make sure that they understand that yeah so the thing is the this sort of demiscanados is not exclusive I mean it looks really beautiful and and gorgeous but I saw on Etsy that there's a lot of people selling these and a lot of them are used but then most of them aren't and they're in you know they're really beautiful so you don't have to go to Toledo to get these and they're not expensive although the older ones like the um, the ones for the vintage ones from 20 years ago 30 years ago those ones might be showing off some wear so you know if you want something more pristine and you want you know your own you know put your own wear on it versus other people's wear um, you should get this on your own okay uh, another thing that um, Toledo is known for is this so these are pastelas de yemas de um, marzipan so basically this is like a very famous type of marzipan so marzipan is sweets made out of al almonds and sugar and flour so but then yemas is this particular one where they actually added egg yolks to it so basically it's a custardy tasting egg yolky tasting not too sweet but um soft almond sweets so this is what they're known for so a lot of the convents in in throughout Spain but especially in Toledo will sell this almonds um, another thing that they're known for is um, olive oil so I bought a they have one olive oil that is like super delicious called Montes uh, M-O-N-T-E-S de Toledo 
and that is a delicious olive oil that we had in Spain, uh, that we had in um, Seville's, I mean, in Toledo. So what happens is uh, when we first got there, we, in the morning, we found out that most Spaniards do not eat like an American or Western style breakfast, meaning they don't eat heavy meat or sausages, bacon, they don't eat a lot of toast or eggs. Um, well, they do eat toast. Let me just rephrase that. So one of the things that they do make, and it's super popular everywhere, is tostadas. Uh, so especially tostadas does not mean like the Mexican-American, like fried tortilla with like fillings on top, like an open sandwich. No, it is tostadas means toast. <laughs> Yeah, so basically tostadas con tomate y aceite de oliva means uh, toast with tomato and olive oil. So basically they'll give you a, a like a baguette that's like cut in half and it's kind of like shaped like a baguette. It's not that hard, like a French baguette, but it's like Spanish bread, like pan which is bread in Spanish. So basically they will rub, they will have a tomato paste or they will rub a ripe tomato and put olive oil on, on, the, on the rough side of the toast. And then they'll sprinkle like um, salt on top of it. Um, so in most restaurants that we went to, they gave the bread to you uh, either with it on top or they gave it to you on the side in a little like, plastic cup or something and you would then put as much uh, of the tomato puree and as much as the olive oil on top as you like so we found that really refreshing and a light breakfast but satisfying because uh, the olive oil it it's fatty so it makes you full and they would eat that with a cup of cafe but it's not the American style coffee uh, a lot of places in Spain do not have American style coffee unless they're specifically catering to Western um, to Western people. They might um, give you an espresso is like those smaller cups. Uh, you can have it with latte or you can have an Americano. An Americano is basically just uh, an espresso with water in it. <laughs> and they are usually put uh, milk in it but you would just say sin um sin leche which means no no milk and we had so much of these beautiful coffees they were super delicious and uh a lot of them use the um real like <laughs> the real espresso machines not like the nespresso machines uh where they pull so much pressure on it that the top of the espresso is like a glossy thick cream you know what I mean it's like thick and creamy and it tastes like amazing yeah so we drank a lot of coffee and we bought a lot of the almond sweets um also uh yeah so basically if you buy the almond sweets in a store they might be fresher and um uh, they might be but they're kind of on the more expensive side so if what you can do is like me and brendan are very curious people so we wanted to inside the city of toledo there's no large stores because it's very mom and pop and the spaces are very small so basically um they would only have what do you call um express like the, there they have this uh, one chain store I forgot what it was called but um, it's an express version of it so they'll be small like kind of like corner stores where you can buy water and your you know your vegetables and stuff in Toledo those stores had very little fresh fruit and um, because it was winter there and they're in the north so they didn't have a lot of fresh fruit or vegetables uh, you know so there was not a lot of salad in that the food there so if you have a vegetarian it might actually be kind of difficult to find stuff to eat 
Um, we managed to find one restaurant that sold like um, vegetarian, like um, paella. I know, but the problem is paella is not really uh, a specialty of Toledo. It's a specialty of a seaside town of Andalusi uh, of uh, Valencia. But we ate it and it was pretty good. You know what I mean? But the northern cuisine, Catalan cuisine of Toledo is mostly meat. So they have jamon. So if you don't eat pork, it's going to be a bit challenging. You'd probably have to eat beef or uh, lamb maybe, uh, which are not as common. So basically one of the most common things to eat while you're outside or anywhere, even as a snack, every grocery store has it no matter how small is jamon. So that's like ham and it's the air dried ham of Spain and it is sliced super thin and there's different qualities of it. So one of the best ones is like Iberical ham and it was so delicious and melts in your mouth. It's like a dark brick red, not brick red, kind of like a dark maroon red, like purplish red. Anyways, it was so good. Um, but, uh, so they'll have varying qualities of it. They'll also have like um, a lot of tuna. So a lot of the salads that you eat there will not be strictly vegetarian. They will have tuna in the salad, which they call vegetarian. So, so yeah, so if you don't like tuna or seafood, then you, it's kind of hard for you to find stuff that is strictly meatless. Um, in Toledo unless you get one of these specialty shops. So one of the best things, that, uh, fun places that we ate in Toledo was actually a baked potato store a shop. This lady, um, we saw her on t uh, YouTube. She had a baked potato shop uh, where she had a huge menu and you can get all types of fillings on it. Uh, you can even get like a lot of, I mean, Unlike other restaurants that I've been to in America, they actually have a lot of um, venison and um, partridge and, and stuff like that. That is the specialties of this uh, area. And yeah, so basically you can get deer meat, venison, um, along with all your other types of fixings. Um, but then that they had an actual uh, potato, baked huge baked potato with tons of fillings on it that was just straight up vegetarian. And that was a very nice and whimsical place to eat there. Um, a lot of the food tends to be um, kind of like more strictly Spanish. Um, there would be some pubs and stuff like that that uh, have a little bit more Western influence that would sell like other types of dishes. Like there was a Shanghainese restaurant um, uh, there as well that was very popular. There was a Turkish restaurants and stuff like that. But we basically stuck with the Spanish cuisine because we wanted to taste it. And Spanish cuisine is regional, so there's not really a pan Spanish cuisine. Although in touristy areas, they do tend to sell certain things. Um, yeah, so it was really beautiful and fun. Um, I'll let you see some of the things that we saw in Toledo. So Toledo, it, it, it's because it was cold and because it was full of churches and whatnot, it seemed very cozy and intimate place to be for like the Christmas season. Um, we had a lot of fun. It was great. You know, the people were easygoing and tolerant of our lack of <laughs> Spanish. And they were very nice and, and would help us whenever we needed help. A lot, one of the things that happened was even though Toledo is a very small city, uh, we get lost a lot because they have really narrow, uh, winding alleys. And if you even took one slight turn in the wrong direction, you can end up walking around and around in these dark alleys at night, uh, shivering in the cold. So, and the, another thing is, uh, be sure to bring some shoes with some nice, uh, sturdy soles because I was just wearing, uh, on the days when I was wearing just like plain soft, ten very soft tennis shoes or, um, walking shoes the foam 
the gosh, they have some really sharp cobblestones that would just cut through poke stab you in the feet so it felt like your the bottom of your feet were pummeled by stones uh after you came out you came back from a long walk and yeah so i don't know how people handle it you know living there it if you're older you have to be careful walking those streets especially in the winter because after a rain those cobbles can be wet and they're not that even <laughs> So we, it was just like a magical time. We were so happy to be working and living there and just going. We would go to this beautiful cathedral that that is like their main tourist attraction there. And this cathedral, it's stunning. So you pay like, I think, 10 euros or 13 euros and you get like the headset and everything. But, you know, we didn't really hear it because it's just bothersome but when you go in and you look at the ceiling it's like they had one of those ceilings where when you look up it's like you're looking upwards into heaven you know what I mean like you can see the people all truncated like they're standing on clouds and you're just seeing them from below and you're seeing the sun shining through the clouds and the sky is like this radiant beautiful heavenly blue and there's like uh, little chubby angels with wings there's like famous people you know godly people spirits and stuff like that and it's just like looks like paradise it looks like you're looking up into the sky soaring up above you as angels and this cathedral had artwork upon artwork by the famous um famous artist from he's actually greek so he's called el greco but he's associated with the city of toledo and el greco is a super famous um really visionary artist and he left his stamp on toledo and one of the and this was he had a lot of paintings in that church but there was also like goya and other like super famous like um spanish uh, painters but El Greco's most famous work is the burial of Count Orgaz and this it so basically it's a paint a mural that is painted at the where this guy's interred this guy has his own chapel in one of the churches there I think it's San Marco Iglesias de San Marco and that's all that there is in that church when you go into that church you pay like three three euros or five euros and when you go in you see the interment and you see this huge this big mural and it's just like stunning um this stuff was painted like hundreds of years ago and it just looks like super vibrant and new you know what i mean that's how well they took care of this painting and they did not allow it to flake or anything and let me tell you I have been obsessed with this painting ever since I was a student art, you know, in high school and I took like uh, AP, which is Advanced Placement Art History class at the D. Young Museum. And he was one of the, this was one of the paintings that was in the book and I would always be staring at it. So basically, um, the Count of Orgaz was a really famous and um, noble of the Toledo and his he was interred there and he had his painting there so basically he's been immortalized um so throughout the cathedrals I mean I've never been like a really big fan or know much about Catholic cathedrals or history it turns out that cathedrals have many chapels it's not just one big room and then there's an altar and then pews for where people sit down there's all these uh chapels off to the side where um rich people that gave money to the church or you know what i mean like nobles or people of of you know fame were interred so they basically gave like money and they uh they to an artist and this artist would create this beautiful like a chapel with the uh, paintings uh figures carvings whatever 
and uh, usually they're in the form of a triptych. So basically a triptych is three parts where um, there's a main panel in the middle and then there's two hinged works off to the side of it that sort of flare out. So it's like three pieces uh, showing a, religion, a religious piece. And a lot of times they would paint the figure or the actual face of the patron or the family of the patron and or the famous people of that time, whoever paid them or whoever was their art patron, uh, they would paint their faces directly onto the historical figures. of, And so these people would technically be um, captured as part of the religious experience. So if it was Jesus or something like that, then one of the people looking at Jesus would be them. You know, so it's like, and they would have the names of the persons or the family of the persons. They would have their names there and they would actually interior them in tombs, like marble tombs or something like that, ornately carved. And they would have them inside the chapel. That was their final resting place. So we were looking at art, yes, but we were also looking at the resting place of these uh, notables of Toledo. So it's really stunning. Um, my roommate is a guy that likes intimacy and smallness and just, he was, he fell in love with Toledo. Um, for me, it was pluses and minuses. I mean, it was 99% most pluses. But one of the things that you know, I consider, if you wanna see if you wanna go there is that um, they have, um, it's a very small place. If you like to go shopping, like fashion shopping or anything, there's no such, or clothing shopping, there's no places really for the people to shop there. Um, and the suburbs are basically very plain and worker-like, you know. So we took a bus over to the new city thinking that, you know, there would be very exciting and modern. It's not. It's very um, dead in the in the daytime because everyone's working in Toledo or in the environments around it. And there's not a lot of people going about. It's not very lively. Um, but the, the Toledo city itself was lively because you get a lot of tourism a tourist you would see busloads of kids coming from maybe Madrid or something like that or from other places in Madrid or other places from Latin America or uh, other places in Europe like Germany where they would come to look at the Christmas scenes so they make Christmas very big there because it's a Christ highly Catholic city it's quite religious because uh, they're religious for their church and their um, and their um, all of these religious things going on there. So basically, I really like it. It's quite a small city. It's quite magical looking. One of the things you might want to do is there's a nature walk. It's very easy to walk. So basically, if you go by the river, uh, they have a ramp that goes down where you can walk um, along the river edge and it's a dirt road uh, with grass on both sides and it's quite lovely, beautiful. Um, and it's not a huge long walk either. You can probably walk it in like several hours. It's not a big city, but it's very charming. It also has its own little mini bus system. So all the buses basically go around the same areas <laughs> where there's a lot of tourists. And um, if you get tired of walking, just take a bus. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, one of the things that I found kind of unexpectedly, even though I heard of it, that was that um, there's not a lot of shops to buy things, useful things like in, in Toledo. Uh, but one of the places where we found anything at all was a large corner store run by um, Chinese people that have been in Spain for like 15 to 20 years. And they had like a variety store that was quite large for Toledo standards that sold like bras, <laughs> underwear, uh, coats, you know, every everything you can think of, paint, you know, housewares, like buckets and, and stuff that people would need to use and school supplies, um, stationery. 
um, Chinese groceries, Spanish groceries, you know what I mean? It was so interesting to see like Asian or Chinese like um, groceries right next to a whole aisles full of like um, Spanish foods and stuff like that. So it was very interesting. And the thing is, there was, it's so, I was thankful to actually have the store like you know be be in the neighborhood and so was like so many people because other than touristy places there's not a lot of places to shop like in the old city of Toledo so all the all the regular locals would be coming in to buy all their like daily needs and stuff like that from there so yeah so you would get your washing liquid dish liquid cleaning supplies um napkins just basically everything was there. Um, the only thing that they didn't have was Tums. <laughs> so yeah, those are sold at uh, pharmacias. So basically anytime you go there into Europe, but it's in, in Spain, if you see a cross, it's lit up in neon green. That means it's a pharmacy and you go in and you ask the pharmacist to help you. Um, it's like, you have to kind of ask them. It's not like you can just go in there and just self-service like at Walgreens or or CVS in America. So I found that's kind of cool because, you know, when you're a foreigner and you don't know the stuff, of course you're going to ask. But I think that's also regulated by Europeans that they have to, before people buy anything that affects their body in that way, they have to get the advice uh, or see like a pharmacist before they can do it. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, I was coughing and <laughs> because the air was really dry and um, I, was wearing, I was wearing a mask and everything. So I had to go in and get some allergy medication. Um, I was not used to the plants in Sevilla, Seville, uh, where they had all these orange trees and stuff like that. Oh, which is a good segue. So after Toledo, um, we decided to go to the south. And the south is warmer and it also has a profound Muslim influence in its uh, architecture. So basically, the next city we went to was Seville, Sevilla, which is Seville. And that, in the winter, this place is magical looking because everywhere you go there's full of trees full of oranges and their oranges are in bloom um, in season I guess in the winter there and these are the famous Seville oranges that British people use in their famous British marmalade uh, they're bittersweet they're not sweet oranges like we have in California the navel ones that we eat during Chinese New Year they're bitter, so but they are everywhere. The trees are full of them. Some of them look kind of diseased a little bit, but most of them are gorgeous, beautiful, round, verdant, and yeah, and they're everywhere. So Seville was quite a lot of difference from Toledo. It was like kind of like the polar opposite. Uh, it was southern, so the uh, the the weather was not as cold and dry as. Uh, as uh, Toledo and it was actually uh, in a different province so this region is called Andalusia and this is where you have the flamenco dancing and uh, the gypsy influence um, with uh, that uh, and, and the oranges and everything so one of the things that um, Sevilla is famous for is called uh, Agua de Naranjos de Sevilla. So basically, it's orange flower and it's called Azahar. That sounds like um, it sounds like uh, Arabic, which I think it is. So basically, um, they have these uh, really light eau de toilette of uh, orange flowers everywhere. Um, this is just one of the um, one of the more popular brands is this one. Um, so this one is like 20, 20 euros, very cheap, but they're very light perfumes. And uh, for our Seville trip, mm, Seville is very not not really mountainous so um 
Toledo because it's like a fort kind of like city. Um, usually fort-like cities are built on hills for better defense and they are surrounded by castle walls. Seville is kind of like the opposite. It's flat, it's um, full of orange trees, uh, whereas Toledo was um, like the typical northern city uh, had the vegetation on the trees had fallen down. Uh, Seville had like I said, the oranges was full of foliage that was really green and orange. And also our hotel that was located in this place called the Piatano, uh, whatever. So anyway, zonal. So basically it's a pedestrian zone. Uh, we just f learned that when we took a taxi from the, so basically from Toledo, we took a taxi, uh, we took a, a train from Toledo to Madrid. And from Madrid, we took a train f from Madrid to Seville, which is like two hours away in the south. So basically, um, our hotel, our taxi dropped us off like two or three blocks away from the hotel and we had to kind of roll our luggages down the street and the first day because there was certain areas in this in this place where our hotel was located and other shopping areas are not allowed they don't allow cars so it was very very intimate um I love that um our hotel was located in the middle of this um pedestrian zone and in the pedestrian zone, it's lined with these really charming uh, shops, and um, they weren't all like they weren't all souvenir shops too. There was quite a lot of shops that sold sleepwear, like not just sexy lingerie, but like your standard um, conservative ladies and men's pajamas and bathrobes and and um, sleep sleep um like pillows sheets and stuff like that so there was a lot of those type of um interesting stores so i guess like and you know i actually went into one of these shops not in seville but in madrid uh, that comes later on and bought like a bathroom because <laughs> it just seemed to be part of the you know part of the things to buy that they you know that they specialize in sleepwear so anyways um yeah, um, in that area, every day when we came out of the hotel and um, it was just like just for us, you know, there was no cars separating us. If we headed in that general direction, uh, we would see all these beautiful shops. We'd see, OK, so in Seville, they're just crazy about plazas. Um, I find that in Europe, essentially they are crazy about plazas so almost everywhere there are there will be like an area where it's like a community with benches and seating where people can just sit down uh, at either like tables or just sit down on benches and watch people go by so yeah I find that just really lovely I wish we had more of those in in American cities where people can just sit there and watch your community go by. Maybe your kids can play and stuff like that. But yeah, so they had these eff everywhere, but in Seville especially, because a lot of the areas are forbidden to cars. So basically, you would walk along and there would be store after store. Some of the stores sold perfumes, they sold clothing, um, they sold the famous um, uh, Andalusia fans, you know, those lacy flans that um, Spanish ladies have. And they also sold the the flamenco dresses and the shawls. They're beautifully embroidered with roses and everything. And I was so upset that um, I didn't get to buy them because every time I wanted to buy it, I was with a male companion who always said, no, don't buy anything. Your luggage is going to be heavy and stuff like that. And I wish I did not listen to that guy because it was just, I mean, one of the more beautiful things that they had there and something that, you know, those gorgeous fringe shawls, I didn't get a chance to look at it. You know what I mean? It was just because I was negatively influenced by someone who did not like shopping and had no 
he had no patience. So when you're going, sh when you're going with people, just you know, try to make your own time and not get rushed by them is my advice. Um, but yeah, so Sevilla had these stunning, like, lots of jewelry, lots of antique shops with, um, they had pearls, they had uh, coral jewelry. I was afraid of the coral because, I mean, they were so beautiful. And I really love red. But the problem is, in red and black is the design of flamenco. And, and it seems to be very popular. Red, yellow, and uh, and, and uh, black seems to be really amazing colors. Um, passionate flamenco, I guess. But the thing is, yeah, I that was one of my regrets, is that I allowed myself to be influenced by that. So even though every day I pass by these stores because I was with someone else who I gave into too much. I should have made one time just to go in for myself and look for it. And next time if I go, that's what I'll be, you know, I'll make up for it <laughs> next time. So anyways, um, yeah, we ha in Seville, um, there was some restaurants that catered to tourists that would sell you like cups and bowls of gazpacho. Although Authentically, gazpacho is generally only eaten um, or drank uh, during the summer as a refreshing cold tomato cucumber soup. Uh, however, because you know a lot of you have to cater to the tourists, and tourists gonna want gazpacho whenever they want, whenever they come to Spain. So, we found these uh, a lot of the restaurants are do cater to in Seville. A lot of the restaurants. Um, do cater to tourists and they get a lot of tourists there when we were there the first time we rolled our suitcase down that um, down that street uh, it was of the weekend and there was so many people there uh, most of them were Spanish um, but they it was like such a lively lovely scene and um, Sevilla has generally really good weather although when we went there for two days it rained and we got drenched and it was cold that time but it's a really beautiful city there's a lot to do there's a lot of tourism activities but then because it's a, a legitimate city there's also fine fine shopping so there's like Rolex stores and you know stuff like that along with stores to keep the tourist kids happy like big candy stores with piled with candy and you know um i bought these t-shirts there yeah it's like really good uh, graphic t-shirt store that i bought like for 10 euros i would buy like a nice t-shirt so those were fun um i actually like went crazy and bought like a lot of perfumes so i don't know why but it seems like in spain were just maybe the cities that we visited, like Sevilla and Toledo, there are a lot of mom and pop perfume stores there. And they, not only do they have like um, single note like perfumes, like this one is from a lovely lady store in Sevilla. And this is called Aromas. Her store is called o Aromas de Sevilla Naturalmont. So she sells like her own uh, one note like this is a beautiful medicinal lavender so if you love medicinal lavender with no sweetness this is it okay I should have bought like three bottles of this because I'm like I really love I'm obsessed with it okay and her stuff is like really good so basically I got this and two other perfumes um, but not only do they sell th these single note perfumes she sells her own creations or her own compositions and she most of all of them sell like stuff that is inspired by big commercial hit so basically uh they would tell you they would ask you like what perfumes do you like and then if you say oh i like um what do you call it what's that really expensive like famous one Baccarat Rouge 540. Let's just say you say that and they're like, oh, well, maybe you'll like this one. You know what I mean? So they will have their own comp interpretations of commercial hits. 
Um, so basically, there's not just her store, but there's this other one called Tertiary, tertiary Sensu that's also really it's like a really big that's like a chain and that one has like tons of stuff and with all sorts of notes and compositions too and th these were cheap so this huge bottle i think this might be like 3.4 ounces um i'm not really sure because they do it with their own like milliliters or whatever like that but this was like 17 euros okay so um I went into another store in Toledo that's in the first city. Um, we got lost and we went in there to, you know, to look around. Basically, I bought like, she brought out a big folder um, full, full of like, you know, notes, perfumes with notes and what they kind of resemble, you know, in the commercial ones. Or, and she also had her own um, with, you know, that she recommended to you because she had like, you know, a hundred perfumes or something like that, men and women's. And then, so I just went through a folder and I smelled some perfumes and I ordered some, but then I also went through a folder and I ordered a whole bunch of other ones too. So they were really strong. And some of those ones were really similar to the ones that, you know, some very well-known ones at home. But anyways, they were big steals. So for a hundred something dollars, a uh, hundred something euros. Um, I got like five bottles, five large bottles of tons of stuff. And I can't wait to try them at home. So yeah, it seems like that's a thing in Spain. Another thing that's really like prevalent in Spain and I've noticed is that they actually had a whole street in Seville that was just for shoes. And it wasn't just in Spain but sabatos that shoes oh my gosh they're everywhere the shoe stores are everywhere in spain and they're all having big sales and i looked at them and they were like mm. i noticed that that spanish schoolgirls because we saw a bunch of them in uniform they all wore this type of um like lug sold um deck shoe leather deck shoe in blue or a burgundy or brown or something like that um that was from this is it was so beautiful so with their stockings and stuff like that so i decided that i would love to have a pair of those shoes and one of the best looking ones is a brand called snipe and s n i p e and these were made in spain and these were like immaculate uh, leather insoles, uh, beautiful, beautifully made like leather deck, sho deck shoes with the, the thick lug soles. And I was, I actually went into a store and I was ready to buy it because they were like 69 or 70 euros. And that's not hardly anything for a full leather shoe. You know what I mean? And I like that style because, uh, it has lace, but it's like a slip-on shoe, basically good for lazy people like me. But it had a thick lug sole. So the, the, the sole was like nice and substantial and good for like walking in rain. So basically I was gonna get that um, as one of my souvenirs of Spain. However, one of the problems was that when I tried it on, it was the 38 was a little too, too big and I've, you know, I, I was going to get it anyways, but then I thought, you know what, if they're too big, it might cause blisters. And then the 37, uh, cause they don't make half sizes. And that's the one thing I hate about like European shoe companies is like a lot of them don't have half sizes like Doc Martens, they don't. And I'm like in between. So basically the 37 <coughs> was just a little too tight like my my toes were just like hitting the wall and I knew that if I wasn't careful that that would just give me horrible blisters so I didn't end up buying it and I'm still lamenting that um to this day so I might wear it with thick socks maybe and just get the 38 um next time I go or I can just order it online and have it sent to America yeah but there's another brand called Diego Gerudo that makes a similar looking shoe, but they're not the same quality, but that's like cheap. It's like $45, okay? And I was thinking like, dude, even with the 20 something dollars, like um, 
shipping, it's worth it. You know what I mean? Because I wouldn't be able to find the exact shoe in America. And I've looked for boat shoes for women and they're just like hideous and not exactly what I was looking for. A lot of them are made of cloth, you know what I mean? Like in a light, like sweatshirt canvas material with the thin soles for, it was just fashion wise, not my aesthetic, you know what I mean? I, 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 I would not want to wear something like that. But these snipe ones are really spectacular. So I think I'll go for it. Um, we might be going back to Spain in a little bit. Uh, what I liked about Spain was the food was pretty cheap compared to other European cities. And uh, the wine was cheap. <laughs> they had a lot of nightlife. So Seville, Sevilla had like on our in that um, no pedestrians and no car zone you would just keep walking and see stores and everything and then all of a sudden you'll be in these areas where it's a it's like all these seating areas outside in with awnings and everything like that um, all these beautiful little tables sat outside and usually Sevilla is really sunny and nice and warm it's like a Mediterranean climate so they would have heating lamps, you know, even though whatever. So the, it was a city that was made for people to eat outside and talk. And the thing is, the in Spain, the, the, the waiters do not, like, rush you out. You know what I mean? Like in America, uh, what I can't stand is, like, you know, they want to th throw you out as soon as you finish your food. And they don't allow you to sit and chit chat and whatnot and look around because they want the table for the next person because the waiters are paid by like commission, you know what I mean? I mean, not commission, but they're paid by tips uh, in Europe because there's not really a tipping culture. Um, they let you sit there. They're not rude. They will not just yank the plate away from you before you can like eat your last bite. You know what I mean? I've had that happen in America and that truly just kind of ruins your eating experience. You know what I mean? It's like very intrusive and rude. You know, I've actually had people try to take my plate before and whilst there was even food on it. You know what I mean? And they don't do that in, in Europe. Uh, so in Europe, you would just like kind of catch their eye and wave and maybe, you know, and say, you know, can I have the bill or something like that? Um, then, then, then they would come with the, uh, they come with the, what I liked about Spain was you didn't have to carry cash. And in the beginning, I didn't understand that. So we bought like, we brought, my cousin gave me some bills and some coins, which I carried in this beautiful, Louis Vuitton gorgeous seasonal coin purse so I've used this for my travels in Taiwan and in Spain where they use a lot of coins and these coins can be pretty substantial because the the largest coin is actually two dollars so um, the change can help you a lot so I had a bunch of change in here and I had like 150 euros and that helped us out because the exchange rate was horrendous um, they take such a high commission and you get very little back for, you know. So I did do a little tiny bit of exchange because um, at the airport, but I'm expecting there to be a lot of um, exchanges, uh, money exchanges like in, Ch in China. I mean, like in Hong Kong and in, uh, uh, and in Taiwan there, the commission is very low and they just you know, you get back a lot of money for what you're exchanging. But in Spain, no, it was just horrendous. None of the banks help, you know, do exchange. And they would have like very few places called cambio de moneda. So that means that they're, you know, they would take like 30% or some horrendous amount um, that wasn't worth it. But we found out that we didn't really need any cash because even some of the uh, transportation like in Seville, I think, or Madrid, you can actually pay with a credit card. <laughs> and the credit cards that we brought with us was especially good to use there because uh, instead of having the chip, which is very slow and you have to stick it in the machine, it actually has the, uh, 
that sign, you know, the, the three quotation marks sign, uh, like a sound, that thing, you just beep, touch it to the screen of the, they have these, um, they bring around these, uh, what do you call it? These portable credit card machine things. And all you, all you do is tell them you want to pay with a tarjeta. Tarjeta means credit card in, in Spain, Spanish. And they would just bring the machine along, type in the amount. And then sometimes they would ask you, do you want to use euros or, um, or USD. So if you use USD, you don't have to do the conversion um, thing. They just charge your card as US dollars. So basically, um, so you just tap the screen and immediately it goes, gets accepted and there's no problem. So everywhere we went, even buying like uh, bus passes, it was no problem. But before we were like struggling to get like change for the bus and then we were astonished to find out that they actually in Toledo especially they make change for you on the bus okay so if you give them five dollars and you're owed back like uh you know 50 2.2 euros they will give you 0.2 euros in, a, in San Francisco they don't make change you know you just pay whatever and you get on the bus and this like, upsets a lot of people but the thing is in america it's all about speed you know no no bus driver is going to make any change for you you better just have correct change or you lose your money and you just get on the bus it's about getting to the next target uh, bus stop on time but in spain they're a little bit I mean, especially Toledo. I don't think in Madrid they really like having that. But in Madrid, we got like a leap card. Um, so no, we got like a tourist pass. So you can buy those for the whole day or you can buy them multiple days. And you just go into any um, subway station or they sell them at like um, authorized uh kiosk on the, on the thing, on the street. Um, and you can just use your credit card and you can just get a whole day's card three days card and the tourist card for madrid lets you go to the airport for no additional price on the subway okay and also you can take the bus or something like that so i found that their subway and their bus system was just fabulous and uh, yeah we were able to get around really well with using um google maps you know what I mean? So there was so many ways to get to some place and they make it really easy. I, I would go to Spain in an instant. Uh, so Seville, we really loved. Uh, the hotel was uh, nicely decorated. Um, it turns out that I snore really bad and my roommate couldn't, he didn't have good sleep and he was getting kind of sick because he got drenched in rain. So I um, actually uh, rented my own room in Spain so uh, in Madrid so we went Seville Sevilla was really great um, they had plenty of salads they have like you know lots of seafood um, you know and oh another thing if you want to ask for orange juice which they serve everywhere you do not say the Mexican American or Latin American Hugo de naranja hugo means juice so it's spelled j-u-g-o it's not what they use in spain spanish in spain in spain orange juice is called zumo z-u-m-o so zumo is what they call orange juice just so you know so we went to madrid after sevilla in Madrid, we had uh, like four or five days. I think it wasn't a lot of time, um, even though it's the biggest city because uh, we enjoyed the leisurely. Um, Sevilla was very leisurely. We like to sit out um, and enjoy the, the atmosphere. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, you're just dining like at a whole street full of restaurants under all these awnings, you know, they'll have like seven or eight restaurants in a row and along the whole street and everyone's sitting out like on the street corner. And uh, I just wanted to say that as a foreigner, we decided to sit on the street outside due to the COVID 
And another thing is like in Spain, if you wanted to eat inside, you have to provide them with the vaccination and like a negative, you know, your negative results and stuff like that. But we decided 99.9% .9 we ate outside and that was not a problem. It was actually kind of great. So, um, so basically, yeah, it was wonderful. We had an amazing paella, Sifu paella in Sevilla our first day. We were lost. <laughs> we were lost and we got hungry and we sat down and ate and then, you know, we forgave each other. I was with someone and we were like bickering. So every time we got lost, we would bicker. And then the problem is sometimes the Google map thing would freeze and I was not a great navigator and I would like, we would sometimes go off in the wrong direct, opposite direction or the wrong direction and we wouldn't find out until like, you know, we, it, until it was like super obvious that we were heading the wrong direction. Um, so anyways, that was Sevilla. Sevilla, they had, um, what do you call it? The Alcazar. So I bought, I went to the Alcazar Sevilla was like a, one of the Muslim strongholds of Spain. So southern Spain was a Muslim stronghold for the longest time until it was reconquered or the Reconquista um, by the, the Christians. Um, so basically, um, I went to this place called the Real Alcazar, which is the Royal Alcazar. And the Real Alcazar is where the Spanish royal family even comes and lives uh, when they're in that city. So basically, an Alcazar is like a, like a royal palace or something. It's it's a Arabic word, actually. But anyways, um, it's derived from an Arabic word. So anyways, uh, you have to buy tickets and go in, and it's like this magnificent, like, um, <laughs> like, Islamic art architecture and then it's kind of melded into Catholic architecture and European architecture so it's a very fascinating place um, I marvel at the gorgeous like mosaic work the tiles and the uh, the you know the almost lacy plaster work that they had so it looks like stone but it looks like the stone is made out of lace, like intricate, delicate lace. And then when you see it in the sunshine, it's almost like an indescribable like feeling that you have. You almost like feel like you're in the Middle East and you're transformed. But then you see the, the Castilian like lions and then you're like, oh, this is Spain. So the Real Alcazar is really cool. Uh, there's two sets of tickets. You can, if you want to see the upstairs, you have to, that's where the bedrooms and other stuff are and the uh, balcony and everything like that. It's really spectacular. I would recommend it. Um, but I was with someone who didn't, <laughs> didn't want to see it. So basically he didn't say, don't waste your money. And I listened to him and then, you know, so we had, we had our experience. It was still fine. I mean, there's so many beautiful elements there that you're just blown away. So just walking in that town was like really super cool. So, um, you know, there's like another cathedral. Uh, this cathedral had, it was an actual working cathedral, like so, so it was a church. And, um, but then it also was a museum. So they also house like, facts with Visigoths and stuff like that. So if for those of you that don't know, um, the Spanish history was, um, there was like the pre-Roman time, then there was the Roman time. So the Romans built like a lot of aqueducts, bridges, and a lot of arch uh, bath houses and stuff full of stone. So basically, um, you will see that in a lot of the museums, they have dug up some of their old Roman baths. They These people had like giant like stone uh, walls and stuff built out and they would just pipe in steaming water to, and have Roman style baths there. It's really amazing. Uh, some of the aqueducts are still around, like in Segovia, you can see them, you know, running alongside the countryside and stuff like that. So it's it's an amazing feat for the tools of the day. And um, so after the Roman Empire was weakened, they had these Germanic tribes called the Visigoths come from like Germany. 
and basically they t- conquered or they t- tried to take over the Roman Empire and <laughs> it's interesting because they're Germanic peoples so there was a church in Toledo called the Visigoth Museum and church and it was fascinating to see the differences uh, they actually took over a former mosque so it was like a Visigoth art inlay over like Islamic cultural arches and windows and, and plaster work it was really fascinating so throughout everywhere synagogues etc you'll see many of these um, Muslim uh, Islamic uh, influence uh, architectures especially the arches so there'll be arches in the synagogues arches in the churches and especially in this place called the Mesquita so whilst we were in Seville Sevilla um, one of the most popular things Uh, day trips was actually uh, a trip to Cordoba. Cordoba is one of the last Muslim strongholds of and one of the Muslim like headquarters of Spain Spain back then so they had this they had another Alcazar there Uh, no no they had this place called the Mesquita Mesquita means mosque in Spanish so basically it's called Mesquita Cathedral so it's a Mesquita It was a mosque turned into a cathedral. So basically what happened was um, after the Visigoths came, the Muslims defeated the Visigoths and then the Christians defeated the Muslims. So basically you would have like, instead of ransacking the the mosque, they, they actually kept the mosque and they built other Christian or Catholic things onto it. So the Mesquita part is, uh, when you go in, it's really huge. It's like endless looking, you know, arches. And you're like, whoa, it's really dark here. So it's like kind of, they made it seem like back in the day when things were only lit by like candlelight or something. So it was like really dark in that part. And then you walk, 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 walk. You see all these, you know, elements to the side and you're like taking pictures of the of the chapels and whatnot then all of a sudden you see these beautiful like um you see this beautiful like islamic like plaster work like lace like i said and it it has light coming through this giant like arch window and it's very beautiful then you walk even further in and then you see boom it's like a freaking renaissance um uh cathedral (laughs) catholic cathedral with really high, really white and bright um, vaulted ceilings, like super high. It was like soaring to the sky, vaulted ceilings and all this light coming in. And you have the choir portion. So the choir portion is really cool. They have, um, they have all these dark wood carvings of like religious scenes and I guess like popes and whatever types of people um, carved ornately carved on all these dark wood seats and you know people sit there and there's those giant organ pipes coming out Um, so yeah it would have been great to have seen like a service with these pipes working and everything like that but you know um, that was that wasn't available so it was really amazing um, to see that blend of uh, architecture together uh, was kind of cool. Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Basically, what I really loved about Seville was it was so walkable. There was a lot of cool shopping. There was like a, f- a nice, friendly, festive atmosphere. Um, people loved to sit at cafes and just chit chat for hours with drink wine. Um, there were some delicious like um, things to eat, like um gorgeous uh one dish that i really loved um was uh pork cheeks braised pork cheeks um in red wine sauce and they would have the uh, this delicious um like hearty meat and it was in a delicious gravy that they would put over uh french fries 
So basically, um, the French fries would be soaking in this delicious meat sauce. And yeah, and you can have uh, in Seville, in most places, you can have it tapa or you can have it ration. So tapa is a really small portion and it's quite cheap. Um, you can get several plates. Uh, ration is a little bit bigger, like maybe twice as big. Uh, it's not a huge portion, but it's pretty filling. And you can get a few of these and you would just eat that for your dinner. You know what I mean? And you can get as little or as much as you like you know, as, as much as you like. So basically it's a great way for people to try several dishes without like having a lot of leftover food or whatnot, you know what I mean? Um, so we tried a lot of things. One of my favorite things was a stew in Toledo was a, a type of stew that, uh, had, t uh, tomato sauce, um, like stewed tomatoes with zucchini and, uh, green beans or, or whatever, uh, eggplant, you know what I mean? It was kind of like a, a vegetarian stew that was very delicious. And um, it's like your typical Spanish cuisine. It had like paprika in it and stuff. And yeah, so I really like, love the food there. My partner, not so much. He kind of got sick because he was drenched in the rain one of those days. The great thing about Sevilla is um, they, in their river, they actually have uh, water sports. So you, if you like, um, you know, that popular thing where you, it's, it looks like a, a surfboard, like a wide surfboard and people stand up on it and use one single paddle and paddle around, they have that. They also have a bunch of people like kayaking. So they had, they rent, you can rent kayaks and do it. There's also boats uh, moored along the side that can give you like river crews. There was actually like a sailboat that was also available but you know winter is like the slow season so I guess there's not that many people there during the, our time but that was the time that we had available oh um sorry to go back and forth like this but yeah so at the Alcazar um it was a really great experience and of course I like to shop so I love to shop at the um the books, the museum stores, because I think they have good quality stuff. And sure enough, they have this beautiful scarf. Um, this is, um, this is made by, uh, this is a 100% silk scarf made by um, Fox, Chav and Fox, C-H-A-V and Fox. And this is um, some Turkish lilies. Um, I forget. No, not Turkish tulips. I forgot. Is it Ishmir or something like that? Something. Uh, I'll have it linked on the bottom. And these are some beautiful, like, uh, silk scarves that they have there. They have other patterns. Um, and I also bought, like, this. Mm. So this is a set of coasters, like, four coasters in different shapes and this is like Roman inspired by the mesquita and the muslim design so basically they are like magnetic so you can use each four of them as coasters or you can put them around a base because they're magnetic so they'll stick to the base and then um, it'll form like an open open top box and you can put a candle inside this and then have these patterns just kind of like show up on the walls I guess um, this is really cool I don't know if I want to give it as gif or try it out so if I do try it out I'll do a video to let you see it um, so that was one of the things that I bought there I also bought like I said like the perfumes and also oh there was this really beautiful fair um, so and during Christmas, they had this beautiful fair in Sevilla. So this is Feria de Sevilla. So basically, all of them have these beautiful design boxes. I um, got these um, gorgeous... I got this gorgeous, like, um, bone box. So this guy is a Tur Turkish guy um, and he's an artisan and he basically hand paints these beautiful like coffrets. So this is like a cute jewelry box, I guess. So basically it opens up like this. It's made out of camel bones. 
Um, so this is from Turkey. So I guess like when a camel gets sick and dies, they, you know, they use the bones to make this beautiful jewelry. I mean, like that. Yeah, so it's like a little like coffret or a little like um, jewelry thing. And um, this guy also made um, really beautiful like um, uh, necklace, like ceramic necklaces. Um, I don't know where that I put them. It's, you know, I've been so out of it when I came back. Yeah, so those are some of the things that I bought there. Um, there, oh, the day that I went to Cordoba, I got, I went to this store called, um, so yeah, the Cordoba was really beautiful. Um, I wish we were, had it some energy because Cordoba has some famous dishes that um, we wanted to share, but um, uh, alas, we weren't able to because, um, because we were so tired, we just came back. Um, so one of the things that I got there was this. Uh, this is called uh, Filigranas de Khalifa. So basically, oh, this is the company, Platieria Khalifa. So this is the artisan. So basically, when we went to Cordoba, it was like, there was an old city so you walk through the city gate and then you'll be in this old city full of like cobblestone tiny little cobblestone streets and uh, one of them was had a storefront that had this beautiful jewelry uh shining from her from her display so I went in and checked it out and so this is one of the things that i bought uh, this is silver plated um filigree work um from I think it's like uh, from the Middle East inspired because this is Khalifal. So it's like um, from the Caliph period during the uh, during the uh, Muslim period when they had a Caliph. So this Khalifal, uh, it's silver plated and it's it it's sparkly because it's like hammered and shiny bits. So basically this will look really spectacular on a silver chain, you know, against black. Um, yeah, so it says Plata 925. Um, so this is 925 is for sterling silver. So I got that and I also got um, this. this as well so this is really nice she has all sorts of different colors and other stuff um, and earrings and stuff too these are pendants um, I don't wear earrings because like one of my ear holds is like closed up and I don't really like earrings because you know I feel like it just not my style but this beautiful pendant would be such a joy to wear during summer and it's like so delicately made and beautiful. So she has them in different colors. I think these are enameled and yeah, so they're so pretty. So she has a store full of all of these in different shapes and sizes and stuff like that. And they're not expensive. I think um, this was like 70 bucks or something like that. Very nice. I was glad I was able to get it. Uh, yeah, so these are the things that I brought back from Spain that uh, I really enjoyed. Uh, another, well, one last thing, and this is, oh, they also had, I couldn't resist going to, um, going to the glove shop. They have this really beautiful glove shop and hat shop in Spain and uh, in Sevilla, and I bought this um, cool a fingerless glove set. So um, fingerless gloves are the way to go when you're on vacation. And they're so cool because these are mustard color, one of my new favorite gloves. And this is like um, wool and it has uh, the thumb here and it has a cool bow right there. So let me try it on for you. It's like one size fits all. So basically it's like this and like this. 
So I like it because um, it's not too thick. And um, so when you're when you're in winter and you need to, you know, use your phone, it's impossible when you're when you have, you know, gloves on your finger, but then you don't want your fingers to freeze to death. So this is the way to go. Um, I'm probably going to give this to my cousin who was lovely enough to give us the the euros and coins. <laughs> we, we, it saved our lives, basically. Um, because until we figured out that we didn't, that most places just takes like um, credit card. So basically, um, yeah, I'm gonna give. I'm probably gonna give these to her because um, she she um, goes to the mountains all the time, and this way she'll have warm fingers, warm hands, and still be able to use her phone or to use her fingers for stuff. Um, yeah, so basically, oh, another, one last thing. And this is so cute. So basically, um, this is uh, another thing that you'll find in Spain. And these are like, items made out of cork yes you heard right cork the same material um that you find you know closing up your wine bottle is also can be used to make um, pouches um so basically if you look closely you can see the the natural uh, cork so this is really amazing there's this one store in toledo um this is called uh made of cork and this is cork spain so this has been open since 1987 so basically i love this because it's really lightweight um the, it comes with a cool zipper tie and this is a great pouch bag because it goes all the way down the sides and guess what it also has the webbing so your stuff doesn't fall out the inside is like this kind of um paperish kind of you know, thing. Uh, it's not that like, you know, sturdy, but it's still fun while it lasts. So basically there's a second zip right here. So this will be fun to have, you know, for, for fun. I, I don't expect, this is probably not gonna last for ages because it's made out of cork. It's not like leather, but you know what? It's super fun. So they have these other flower patterns and stuff that they have in, in the store. That's just one of them. Other stuff that I bought from the cork place um, is really cool. So this, guess what this is? This is a really cool pattern. Um, this is really short and small. And you might think, oh, it's like a, a money wallet. Nope. Look, it's magnetized and it opens up into a, a sunglasses case. Look, isn't that cool? So basically, you can t uh, keep your sunglasses in here. It'll protect it in your purse, keep it from scratching, and it has a magnetic um, claps too. So it goes like that, and when you take your sunglasses out, it folds down, like a, you know, the sides fold down, so you can have it small like that. So when you're not using your sunglasses, it can save you space inside your wallet. That's really super clever. Um, another thing that I really love is I like these size um, little, like, I mean, these can hold probably credit cards, um, like little zip things like this um, inside. So they can hold credit cards, but then they can just hold your, you know, hair clips, pins, um, you know, like earbuds, uh, I, I like to floss my teeth with dental picks and stuff like that. I'll keep it in here. Um, so this one is cool because it has a separate pouch with a button so you can keep things separate. And then it has a bigger compartment with a zip. And these are cool. I really love this, you know, blue design. It, sh it shows off so nice on cork. And it, it has like an earthy design. Like you can really see the cork here. Um, you know what I mean? And yeah, so hopefully this will last a good long time. I don't know if it would, but you know what? It's fine. It's it, 
biodegradable. You know. So basically another, the last thing I bought, I bought, I love those little pouches so much that I bought another one um, in this. I wonder if it's like breaking down. Oh well, it's okay. So I have another one. I have another one in this really cool design right here. So they have like pencil cases, all sorts of stuff made of. It's a very versatile material. And one of my favorite things, and I can't wait to start using, is this really cool um, marble effect looking um, like uh, notebook. So these are cool because they open uh, flat in the middle and they're sewn they're sewn in a way that you can use um, from from the middle to the side. There's no like lost space in between where you, it's hard, you know. So it lays flat when you're writing. So it's really cool. See how they have the binding like that? So it's really clever. And this is like a really nice spongy texture, nice color. Very nice, uh, can't wait. So yeah, so these are some of the things that I bought from Spain. Um, another things that I bought are, oh, let me show you the, the, the mask that I use in Spain. So basically, um, oh, okay. Yeah, so basically, you know, mask, if you're wearing black mask, if you're wearing a white mask, it looks kind of unfriendly and not cool. So I went online before I left and I bought like these um, pretty looking masks. So these are kind of shaped like KN95s. They came in these really cool like um, neon colors, like uh, neon green, neon yellow, and neon pink. Yeah, and they look, and there's also like a gray color too. I don't know why. So they just said, so, you know, they came in like packs of like 50. So, I, you know, whenever I left the hotel, um, I, the, Spain is very strict about like uh, wearing your mask in public transportation and in public places like this train station and whatnot. So uh, everybody would be wearing their masks like that. So this is what it would look like. I think it looks really cool. I thought when I took pictures, they really popped up. Um, if you're staring at what I'm wearing on my head and like, what the hell is that? Yeah, so in Madrid, it was really cold actually the first several days because uh, it was like a northern city. And uh, basically what I did was um, there was a, th we were at this really cool hotel called the Plaza de España. Um, at the Plaza de España, what was it called again? A uh, Rui, Rui Hotel, R-I-U Hotel, Plaza de España. So this place is one of the tallest hotels in Madrid, and it faces like a really cute, like central, like park. So this park is really nice because during Christmas they have like a, a, a little, it's not a huge, um, but they have a little Christmas fair with booths uh, that sells like snacks and um, handicrafts and um, one of these Peruvians um, was selling a guy from Peru was selling stuff from Peru and basically one of them was this sort of like pom double pom-pom hat that kind of looks like Mickey Mouse but it's not Mickey Mouse it's double pom-poms and basically um, it's forgive the hat hair it's uh, lined uh, with fleece in the in the um, in the inside, and this was made my head nice and cozy. I also wore a, a thick um, white knit cap, and I've decided that I'm going to wear white knit caps instead of black knit caps because basically, when you're wearing a black knit cap and you're wearing like the scary looking black mask or whatever mask, it makes it makes me look really mean and scary and unapproachable. So when I wore the white cap, I actually thought I looked really cute like a kid, you know what I mean? It made my head look really nice and round and uh, people really liked it. I mean, they were looking at me and, you know, cause I guess my mask stood out cause they were pink and green and yellow. Whereas everybody's was just like white or black or blue or whatever. So basically, um, yeah, in Spain, this hotel was amazing. 
uh, one of the specialties was they have uh, a 365 degree view of Madrid from the top floor. And um, the first day we went up there and it was just spectacular. So it was rainy on that day. So um, they they had some places with like heat lamps and stuff like that. So it was a huge um, outside patio and um, we sat around, I, the, the, there was like seats around the edge where I sat. So basically they have a glass partition. So your food and stuff doesn't fly off the side of the building. So they have that. But then you, if you stood up, you can look over the partition and you can see the whole place. And if you go around the whole perimeter of the roof, it was built for parties. So there's DJ booths, there's like, um, uh, outside cushions you know what I mean there's booths where people can sit together and parties and chit chat and stuff and in coffee tables and stuff like that all around so basically when we were there it was the winter so it wasn't as prevalent and also because of COVID um, they didn't have food served uh, on there so we just went up for drinks and I found this amazing yuzu it's like a, a Asian Japanese citrus called yuzu you would know why UZU that was amazing tonic drink that they had there and I've been trying to find it and I have not found it um I think it might have been a, a limited edition or exclusive to that particular hotel but anyways it just puts all other tonic waters to shame it was like drinking citrus perfume you know what I mean it was so sparkling and refined and just amazing it wasn't like a sour lemon you know simple lemon it was like a floral lemon like experience it was so refreshing and delicious and um when you ordered drinks they would uh come with they would give you a little uh bowl like a mini bowl of handmade um uh potato chips oh and that's one of the things that I found out that Spanish people love to eat fried foods they especially love to eat chips or yes potato chips yes there was many places at the fair and also uh, specialty stores where they actually had uh, were showing people frying huge piles of freshly made chips and people would just line up and buy like a bag of chips you know what I mean freshly fried homemade potato chips um, another thing that I loved in Toledo was um, they have these things called empanadas de Galicia so Galicia is a, a place is a region in Spain and instead of having regular empanadas where they're just like um, they're just individually sealed hand pies these are giant huge pies they'll cut them in quarters and they're nice and thin crust but they're nicely baked they're not like really thick but they come in so many beautiful fillings the one I had had a filling of uh, eggplant um, zucchini um, bell peppers and tomatoes like stewed together and it was delicious and it was huge it was like um, you know like one quarter of a large pizza <laughs> in America that's how big it was so basically uh, this lady she sold it at the Toledo uh, Christmas Fair in a booth and her her um, specialties are uh, the scallop ones and also the uh, octopus ones so she said those were her specialties and I wanted to go back and get some but there was uh, I, I did not get a chance to try the scallop one so this time when I go back hopefully she's still there if not, if she's only there in the Christmas, then I would have missed out on my opportunity. But next time, um, the empanada lady, I'm coming back for the scallop ones, okay? So, yeah, um, our hotel, Ryu, uh, uh, Plaza de España in Madrid was incredible. Um, I had my own hotel room, which I was happy about. Uh, the only that thing I did not like about it was the and I don't know if this was common to all rooms but we had like a, just a regular basic room you know what I mean instead of having like thin carpeting like most hotel rooms do or just like plain hardwood floors this place had like this weird 
dark green brown linoleum or whatever the heck it was and it felt gross to walk on with bare feet you know it was like kind of like plasticky feeling so I'm glad I brought my uh, bedroom slippers to walk in but that was the only bad thing about it um, I watched some Spanish TV that hotel had like tons of channels and uh, there's a lot of American shows on there that are dubbed or subtitled and they have all their own shows as well as news channels too so actually because I do I did take some French and I do live in California and you know there's some Spanish that I understood so I didn't have a hard time with the people in terms of making clear what I wanted in terms of ordering food and stuff like that uh, there's uh, quite a lot of Latin Americans like from uh, Central America, Venezuela, um, Guatemala, Honduras, uh, etc., and also Peruvians um, that also live in Madrid, as well as lots of Chinese people. So Madrid was the most cosmopolitan city out of all of them in terms of diversity. You can find Peruvian restaurants, American restaurants. There was a TGI Fridays. There was a Tony Roma's. Uh, there was five guys. I mean, there was five guys in Seville. So yeah, but there was like Chinese restaurants. So the first day we went there, my roommate was really sick. And he said that he couldn't because he got sick eating whilst he was eating the Spanish, traditional Spanish food. He he didn't feel like eating that food and he kind of like associated that food with his illness so he couldn't face it so basically we had to eat at a Chinese restaurant <laughs> and then uh, the good thing about this hotel was that um, they had quite they have a lot of American tourists probably because um, in the more we bought this hotel because it also comes with the uh, breakfast buffet so the breakfast buffet became very handy um, because that just took, you know, the the tiresome where are we going to eat today or what are we going to eat today out of the equation because uh, because Madrid was the last leg of our Spanish journey and we had done so much walking, so much sightseeing, so much picture taking and you know just tracking around we were super freaking tired and my roommate was actually literally sick and could barely eat anything for like two days and he was like so tired and out of it he could barely like walk a few steps without asking me to slow down and I'm, I'm not even a fast walker so basically um that breakfast kind of like saved our lives because basically I can be feel free to eat whatever I want and he can eat whatever he wanted which for the first day was basically a piece of toast dry toast and some watermelon yeah so basically um this buffet was cool the first day we we went in it was like Christmas day Christmas morning and they had put out a nicer more varied buffet than usual and they had cava which is like Spanish uh, sparkling wine or sham kind of like the equivalent of the French champagne but their own because champagne's a region so you can't use champagne so it's cava Spanish sparkling wine they offered that uh, with uh, with also orange juice or just on its own uh, as part of the celebration and the first day because of the celebration I the dessert table and they had desserts for for breakfast yeah they had a dessert table for breakfast was festooned with like chocolate cakes um, this divine raspberry mousse tart which I am glad I grabbed a slice of it that day because they didn't have it ever since. So it was raspberry mousse, very light, and then in the middle there was like a, a, a jellied raspberry or something like that, a uh, paste in the middle. It was just divine because it was so light and easy to eat and it wasn't too sweet. Um, that's what I liked about the Spanish uh, desserts is that they don't tend to be as heavy and sweet as like um, other like American desserts you know what I mean so they had this one thing that I've been dying to try because I have been seeing it in every grocery store that I was in and there's it's like this donut looking ring um, that's like a, a sweet bread cut in half 
uh, like uh, cut in half along the uh, the side, not along the top, you know, so along the side, and they filled the, it was like uh, sandwiched in with like a, a layer of whipped cream, and then on the top, you can see they had put like um, a sugary glaze with red and, gr red and green like candied fruit, you know, on top, and it looked amazing, and they had these big ones, they had these small ones, you know what I mean, in all the grocery stores in the refrigerated section, but I couldn't dare to get it because even the small one was kind of big, you know what I mean? So I was really happy to be able to try it. It's called Roscon de Reyes. So it's like King's Cake or something like that. So they eat these during Christmas and it's basically like a brioche type bread. It's not that sweet, but it's slightly sweetened. And they put like a, um, uh, let's see, orange rind water, you know, like orange water with the zest of oranges and um, sugar syrup or something like that. And they moisten the outside of it or they bake it in with candied fruit on top. And then uh, some of them have whipped cream sandwiching the two layers, but some of them don't. And it's just like one layer of that donut looking brioche with the the candy glaze, uh, candied fruit and glaze on it. So I was able to try that and I was eating that for several days. But one of my favorite things to eat in Spain, and I'm really craving it right now, is churros con chocolate. So at the, uh, they, at the breakfast buffet, one of the last things I would eat every day would be like a Madrid style um, churro. So the Madrid style churro is, is like basically in a loop like this. So it's like a loop. It's not like a donut and it's not straight like the American ones. And it's really thin. It's like this thin, uh, very thin kind of fluted. And it's basically, um, it's not that sweet. So basically the dough is kind of slightly savory and it's not too oily. It's actually like crispy, but it's not full of oil. You know what I mean? And it's actually kind of dry and it's not sweet, slightly savory. And basically um, it's not heavily fried either. So there would be this um, dispenser where you can pour, you can uh, dispense some hot chocolate and it's not your Swiss Miss hot chocolate that's like watery. It's actually thick. It's more like a chocolate sauce, but a beverage and it's not that sweet. It's like bittersweet. So basically um, it's like a dark chocolate sauce beverage thing that I would try to, I don't like to waste the chocolate sauce, so I try to get as little as possible onto a ceramic cup. And then you can uh, pick the uh, the, tel uh, the Madrid style um, churros and put it on your plate. So the other type of churros that they have is called apuras. And that is what is kind of like greasier, um, thicker, it's greasier and thicker and it has like, you know, uh, uh, like a darker uh, stuff with oil, uh, with holes in it and lots of pockets of oil and stuff like that. It's called the Puras. So I've had two. I've had the Puras. When they make the Puras, it's like, you know, it's like a spiro, like a snail, you know what I mean? So basically, um, these ones, they actually cut into chunks for you at the hotel. But I didn't realize that and I went into one of these bars because they said they had churros. So I said, <clears throat> oh, give me your churros. And they were like, some, they said something in Spanish and I didn't understand it. So then they took, they gave me this plate and it was like a huge, a like spiro, like, like giant thing, like this big, like spiro of like really, uh, not greasy, but kind of deeply fried and really crunchy and airy, like, uh, churros uh, with no sugar on that side with a lumpy chocolate sauce uh, that they made on the premises. So that was good too, but I much, much prefer the Madrid style churros. And I've been craving that so bad that I actually went online and found out that they do churros in that Madrid style in San Francisco, but you have to have it delivered to you um, and you have to buy like at least $30 worth of items um, of stuff, which is fine. I'm craving it so bad. I cannot, however, have 30 
I can't eat like 30 churros or 10 churros, 15 churros. So I do want to have a churros party with my family, but I'm waiting for the COVID thing to end because I have to take my mom out to get cataract surgery. And I myself have, uh, are having some medical issues. I mean, medical things taking procedures taken care of this year. So basically I can't have that yet, but yeah, uh, I found it on, uh, I think Yelp. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, pretty soon I'll be having a, a churros party, uh, Madrid style. Um, so hopefully everything works out well. I hope you guys did well and I had a really great vacation. Oh, oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. This is turning out super long, but in Madrid, um, we didn't get a chance cause we, one of us was ill and the weather wasn't that great. We didn't get a chance to really look around. So basically, I took us to the Prado and to the um, Thais and Bornemitsa Museum. So basically, the Prado is a world-renowned museum that has, like, a plethora of famous art. So we saw, like, uh, Rubens, uh, Delacroix, I think, um, Fra Angelico, and, you know, all these famous artists that I've... Goya... Um, Rivera, Velasquez, you know, and uh, this new Spanish, well, it's new to me, called Ribera, who is a famous uh, Spanish artist, and Caravaggio, and all of these things that um, basically I never thought I would see in my lifetime, except in the books of a, of a textbook, you know what I mean? So I realized that, and um, in the... Uh, the Tyson Bornemitsa, um, we got to see uh, Salvador Dali and um, all these famous artists, um, and they even let us like film inside as long as you don't have, take snap photography. The only thing is I bought tickets, you can buy tickets to all three museums and it costs the same as the regular fare to two museums. And um, I bought three. But the thing is, I didn't realize that one of the, the museums was closed on the day that I bought it because uh, that I wanted to use it because I got disoriented and I thought the day was a different day or something like that. So yeah, be aware of stuff like that. So I missed out seeing the Guernica and the modern art and surrealist art in the uh, Reina Sofia, which is the Queen Sofia Museum in Madrid. But all in all, it was wonderful. Um, one of the the Bornemitsa Thyssen Bornemitsa Museum was amazing. Uh, like I said, it was like artwork upon artwork upon artwork. It was like I got to see one of my favorites was Canaletto, and he does this amazing like painting of Venice that it's just gorgeous. And I was able to sit in the same room as that and see it in person. It was just a spectacular feeling. You know, I felt like I've I've succeeded in life or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. It gave me a sense of well-being for sure. And so because in the Prado, there was so much stuff that I could barely, I mean, we spent hours there and we, there were still places, uh, things that we didn't see, like the, the Greek statues, the marble statues were spectacular. We didn't get a chance to see that. So I bought the the Prado guide and they have these guides in different languages and they're like 29 bucks or 20 something dollars. Um, yeah, so it's really beautiful and it, it shows a lot of the artwork and, you know, everything like that so you don't miss out. I um, also bought like these really, this really cool, um, I bought this. Um, so the Prado houses one of the really famous uh, paintings uh, that I've ever seen and it's like ahead of its time and uh, I'm you may have heard of it. It's called the, um, it's by Her Her Hieronymus Bosch. And this guy is like ahead of his time. So he was like a, a Dutch painter and uh, he painted heaven uh, and hell and earth. So in, in a triptych and this thing was like so detailed and so crazy. Um, go look it up. I'll try to show it on here. Um, this guy I saw this stuff in person and there was like so many people in front of it it was just like wow you know what I mean but anyways this was one of the things that I bought back and this is like a 
um, of what do you call it? Just like a plate, what do you call it? A place setting um, placemat, a food placemat for for the table. Um, you can, it's like made out of this like like foam, plastic foam or something like that. It's wipeable clean. So yeah, this is like really beautiful. I also bought like a notebook with this cover as well because I thought, you know, this is a great design. Uh, yeah, so all in all, um, oh, I meant to say that the Born, the Thyssen Bormitsa has an amazing restaurant quality uh, restaurant or cafe inside of it. Yeah, there's inside seating and outside seating, but the food is like really good and the price is really good too for a museum food. It's actually really good. They also serve wine and beer and whatnot too. So um, if you go for like a few hours a day, it's totally worth it. It's not that expensive either. I think it was like um, all in all, I think we had paid like 30 something dollars um, for all three museums which is very cheap um, for places housing such nice artwork, you know. These are things that I never thought I would see in my lifetime. So I was very moved um, to see stuff like that in person. You know, I feel like I've arrived and I'm successful enough to, to see things that I wanted to see when I was a kid, but I thought it was like a dream. And I didn't, and all of a sudden I saw it. So yeah. Um, this was like a wonderful vacation. We spent uh, the last four days in Dublin, um, which was nice, but you know, it wasn't like enough time to really explore it. Uh, in Dublin, we basically took it easy. We ate a lot of scones. I don't know why Americans cannot be make scones the same as the UK and Ireland make scones, how they're so fluffy and tall. Whereas ours are really crumply and like kind of hard and crumply. Yeah, it's not the same. And ours are just have this much sugar and stuff on it where, and berries and stuff. Whereas theirs can just be plain or just have like currants and not much sugar. But it just like tender and melts in your mouth and looks really spectacular so their biscuits I mean their their stuff is really fluffy and high and I mean it just looks like the most amazing biscuits but they're not salty they're they're slightly sweet they're not very sweet like the American ones are and they just sort of like I said they're tender and they melt in your mouth especially if you take it if you take a sip of like their Irish breakfast tea and it just melts in your mouth in the most delightful way. I ate as many scones as I can. I also bought like um, a tray of uh, Marks and Spencer um, mince pies, and uh, put it in the mic. I put it in uh, the oven, uh, toaster oven, when I got home, and I ate that. Um, I really miss the mince pies in the UK. Uh, the Marks and Spencers was pretty good. Um, it was mostly raisin. But I had a spectacular mince pie in London in 2011, I think. And I have not stopped thinking about it since. And basically this was bought at the special specialty food market called the Borough Market, uh, which is like a food haven in a warehouse uh, setting um, full of shops, uh, specialty uh, shops, uh, where I bought the most delicious uh, mince pies and the most delicious and amazing jams. Um, and jellies. Um, so basically, uh, that particular one had a majority of uh, fruit peel, and I think that was the difference. Um, the fruit peel was very mellow and brand, like kind of liquored and brandied, and it just basically changed the the texture and flavor of the mince pie and made it much more elegant and delicious to me. I don't, I feel like a raisin and, and apples or whatever you put, if it doesn't have a high, uh, quantity of fruit peels, it doesn't, it lacks that special something, something like the fruit peels give it like a slight bitterness, a slight elevated, like, um, essential oils content, like floral content, um, some tartness, some refreshingness. 
and like lightens up the texture so it's not just pasty it's like kind of like crunchy a little bit yeah so basically I'm trying to find a fruit filling for mince pies and I think I might get the uh, there's one that is high in fruit peel I think that is coming that is available online somewhere and I think I will give that a try uh, I think I will also try to uh, approximate the Roscon de uh, Reyes from Spain. Uh, basically, I was going to take a brioche bun that we have in, <laughs> and basically hollow out the middle so it looks like a donut, like they do, like they have it. And I will just um, zest a lemon and zest an orange and uh, make a simple f rum and fruit syrup and just kind of like brush it on the side, uh, brush it on the uh, bread part and glaze it and just put a layer of whipped cream in between and see how, see how that goes. Yeah. So basically that's my trip. I uh, hope you found it entertaining uh, and I will insert as many pictures that I can. Uh, this is like a super long video, so I, it's going to be cut in half. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to go and eat some of my delicious foods. Um, one of them is these European Kit Kats. So these are dark chocolate Kit Kats made by Nestle and not by Mars that we have in California. I mean, that we have in America. Another thing that I really miss tremendously, and I had not realized that they didn't make it in America, I mean, is the Pelotazas. So they're basically Cheetos, but they're shaped in the form of um, soccer balls. So pelota is a game of ball, ball game, I guess, or balls. So basically pelotazas are like crispy corn snacks, kind of like our Cheetos, but without the nasty, super cheesy filling. And so it's really not salty whatsoever. It's barely salty compared to the R Cheetos and I bet it's probably healthier although, you know. So I really miss eating those. I ate two whole packs of that in Spain and I should have bought some um, back to America's because I try to look it up what it costs to get stuff shipped and it basically costs like 20 bucks or something per packet so that's too expensive um maybe i'll look in the mexican stores and see if they have something similar i did see something but it's spicy <laughs> so it's not the same and it's fairly salty so it's not the same as the spaniard one uh spanish food is not very spicy at all and their mexican food is not great um i just have to say that the tacos was pretty good but uh the burritos which is a specialty of Northern California, San Francisco especially, is terrible. They did not have enough salsa. They didn't understand the concept of salsa, I think um, that's the problem. But they had a guacamole dip, which, which, which I didn't have. So yeah, just to let you know. But the empanadas, like the Argentinian type empanadas were spectacular. So there's empanada shops in Spain one had really good a uh, thin when was a chain and that was right next to our hotel which was great because if um, they were open really late so if you wanted a midnight snack they had tons of fillings and if you bought like four you get a free drink or something so i bought like two vegetarian ones um and ate them and two uh meat ones and ate them they were super delicious and i had a free drink too and there was another uh in madrid um in Madrid, you have to, you have, it's very grand, um, but there's all these neighborhood shops, and there was a lot of Chinese restaurants, which I was surprised. Like I said, one of them served really high class food, and it was very nicely decorated, and I was kind of proud that they were, do, you know, they were doing our cuisine um, proud. Uh, the other one we had, <laughs> I somehow we've somehow offended the waitress and she gave us atrocious service and my but my roommate was able to eat a noodle soup which he had been hot noodle soup which he had been craving because he wasn't feeling good so he claimed that it was delicious but I found it just so so and of course the waitress was atrocious so I didn't like it that you know so I would have liked to have tried some 
Peruvian, Peruvian restaurants and other things as well. Um, so anyways, I can't wait to go back to Spain, Spain Madrid especially, because I didn't get a chance like to check out the neighborhoods and, you know, uh, our time was very li limited there. And I know this, it's a very huge place and had so many things, you know, to do and we barely scratched the surface. However, my roommate does not like Spain, um, does not like Madrid because he was, uh, it's, it's a huge crowd of people, especially during Christmas. Uh, he felt like it was like a cold, hard city, fast paced. Um, I liked it because the, um, the transportation was great. Um, people were pretty much okay, they're cool and they would help you and you know there's a lot of neighborhoods you know to check out that we didn't get a chance to eat at or check out you know what I mean so uh it just gives us more time to go back um and we can't do everything at once we did all we could you know without breaking our health so that was important for us to have some rest um so anyways thank you for your patience I'm glad that you got I got to share some of this with you I'm also doing this mostly as for myself to record my uh, feelings and record my experiences so I can replay it and have a good time and share it with my family thank you so much for uh, watching uh, I'll, I'll be back next time goodbye <laughs>